secret flights, free food, cheap accommodations. We've got your new Disney World travel tips all laid out for you here today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. If you're getting ready to travel to Disney World, or even if you're planning on traveling somewhere else, we've got some great new tips for you that'll help make your flights, your car rides, and your hotel stays way less stressful and way more manageable. If you want a copy of all the different travel tips we're talking about today, somewhere that you can easily access them wherever you need them, make sure to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash more travel tips. That way we can send you a PDF copy of everything we discuss in this video right to your inbox right now. So without further Further ado, let's jump right in, find out how to improve your 2023 vacation before it begins. Now, this is a bunch of new tips that are particularly relevant right now, or tips that we have used personally and they have been really, really helpful for us. Because you know that's our job here, making mistakes so that we can tell you about them so that you don't make them. <laughs> All right, first one is getting free Wi-Fi on your flight. If you got a long flight ahead of you before you reach MCO, then you're probably looking for a surefire way to kill time. But if the five to six time killing ideas coming to your mind right now all involve Wi-Fi, and you'd rather not pay extra for in-flight connectivity, then you might want to start looking into flights with Delta. Delta flights will start offering free Wi-Fi on over 500 planes starting February 1st. Here's the catch. You need to become a member of Delta's free Sky Miles loyalty program to access the new free benefit, which is a super quick and mostly painless process. Otherwise, passengers will pay a flat fee of $10 for Wi-Fi, which still isn't that bad. You'll also be able to connect multiple devices, meaning you can mindlessly scroll through TikTok on your phone while your kid watches Coco Melon on YouTube from their tablet. Next on our list, we're going to tell you again, sign up for TSA PreCheck. Long security lines at the airport are the worst, and they get really long at MCO. Those consistently lengthy security lines can be a hassle. And you got to take off your shoes. You got to pull out your little bag of liquids. You got to figure out if you need to take all that technology out of your bag and put it in another bin. But if you have TSA PreCheck, you'll get to enter through a separate security line for all participating airports, and it's much faster. One where you can keep your shoes on, keep everything in your bag, and breeze on through. Last summer, the Orlando International Airport launched a new TSA pre-check enrollment initiative for everybody going through that airport. And that gives the passengers the opportunity to enroll in TSA pre-check at the airport without reserving an appointment. The process to enroll takes about five minutes or less and costs $75, but that cost will cover you for five years. To enroll at MCO, you'll need to track down the IDEMIA TSA pre-check enrollment ambassadors at the security screening area. I know that sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo if you've never been. But basically, you're going to find this area located in front of the security checkpoint for gates 1 to 59 on the south side of the airport. Enrollment hours are posted between Monday and Friday from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. The early bird gets the TSA pre-check worm, I guess. And it will take three to five days to be approved for TSA pre-check. So here's my advice. When you land at MCO and are near ready to switch over to vacation mode, sign up for the TSA pre-check then, if your flight arrives early in the morning on a weekday. Then, when your trip is wrapping up, the TSA pre-check should be ready for you to use for your return flight, giving you the chance to skip over those massive MCO security check lines. But don't forget, you can also sign up for TSA at your own airport. Just look into what the specifics are there. Now, this next one is near and dear to my heart at the moment, and that's knowing about Disney's Lost and Found system. There is a Lost and Found at guest relations in every park and in most of the hotels. In addition to this, you can also fill out a Lost and Found form online that's going to help Disney track down your item. The Lost and Found website is called chargerback.com. It's going to ask you a series of questions about your lost item, and Disney will email a lost claim item number to you, which you can use to check in on the status of your case. You're going to receive an email update after 48 hours hours. And if Disney finds your item after you're already on your plane back home, they will send it to your house free of charge. Now, I recently had to leave a Disney hotel very, very early in the morning, and I forgot to open the closet and take all my stuff out of it. About two months later, I noticed that all that stuff was gone because the things that were in the closet are like fancy clothes, and I don't wear fancy clothes at home. So it wasn't for two months that I realized I needed those clothes, and they weren't there. So I got on chargerback.com, and I was like, hey, Disney, I know you're probably never going to find the stuff, but here's generally what it is. It was things that I can't buy anymore. They don't sell them anymore. So I was super, super sad. Well, lo and behold, my friends, they had all of them two months later and they sent them all FedEx in a nice fancy box, all taped up and it was totally free to get all those clothes back. They had kept them. I was thrilled, over the top, overjoyed, excited. So the system does work. So use it if you need to, especially for those loveys. You know, when your kid leaves their stuffed animal. Oh my goodness. 
that's a nightmare, go ahead and use the system. They might have it. Our next big piece of advice, and you know I love this, is going to an after hours event in Disney World. You drove or you flew all this way just to run into major park crowds during the day. Hmm. Think it's about time for a plan B. After hours are separately ticketed events that are finally back in Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. It's taken, what, three years, four years? And they allow a certain amount of guests to explore the parks after they close. Tickets cost between $139 and $159 per person, depending on the day. But once you pay that price, you'll get three hours in the park after it closes for everyone else. Not to mention, you can get the party started even earlier if you'd like, since after hours ticket holders usually can enter the park as early as 7 p.m. So you'll have access to pretty much all the rides with way shorter lines than you'll find during the day. And if you go into the park at 7 p.m., you'll have basically a full day's worth of time in the park, and it won't be super, super hot and debilitatingly crowded. And although the after hours events won't keep the shows open, you can still catch a few and the park's nighttime spectaculars if you use that 7 p.m. entry time to your advantage. Don't forget about the complimentary snacks too. Hit up a snack cart during the event to pick up your free ice cream, popcorn, bottled beverages, and you'll be able to get those endlessly all through the night. So as much popcorn as you can possibly eat. After hours events are only available on select nights and they book up very, very quickly because they are a great deal. You can fight me on that in the comments, but I've been to after hours events. They are empty. You can ride the most popular rides over and over and over again, and you don't have to deal with the heat of the day and the crowds of the day. It's incredible. So currently after hours dates are only listed through April for Hollywood Studios and up till March for Magic Kingdom. You'll find that the majority of after hours events for Hollywood Studios happen on Wednesdays with an extra Sunday after hours event listed for April 2nd, and the majority of after hours for Magic Kingdom Kingdom happen on both Mondays and Thursdays. So if you think these time frames are going to align with your visit, check the Disney World website for details and ticket prices as soon as you can. Next travel tip is going to be controversial and that's okay. That's why we're here. We're here to give you pros and cons. This travel tip is to stay off property. There are positives and negatives when it comes to not choosing a Disney owned hotel to stay at during your vacation. But if we're just looking at the pros right now, you'll find that other accommodations like good neighbor hotels and Airbnbs can often provide more space at a better price point and still keep you fairly close to the parks. Currently, the Disney Springs area hotels have some mighty fine vacation package deals going on. The brand new Doubletree Suites by Hilton Orlando has spacious two room suites starting at $109, which can sleep up to six guests. Oh, and kids eat free, so take advantage of their dining offerings. Drury Plaza Hotel Orlando has special rates starting at $144.99. This won't just get you a room, it'll also get you free hot breakfast and free 5.30 kickback with a rotating menu of dinnertime snacks, cold beverages, beer, wine, mixed drinks, and more. Wyndham Garden Lake Buena Vista has family escape packages that can save you 10% on your nightly room rate. This price will also give you access to the Oasis Aquatic Pool area and all recreational amenities. And Holiday in Orlando has special rates starting at $79. Bucks. Kids 11 and under eat free here too, along with the purchase of an adult meal. If you want to explore these deals yourself, check out the Disney Springs Hotels website. You can also check out the areas on the Good Neighbor Hotel website too. These hotels may not be owned by Disney, but they do partner with Disney to provide similar resort perks that you'd otherwise receive while staying on property. Now, nearby Airbnbs, VRBOs, rental properties don't partner with Disney, but they do still provide rental homes of all shapes and sizes for mostly affordable price ranges. We've got an Airbnb video out now talking about some of the most outrageous Disney themed rentals around the Orlando area. And you can check that out after we wrap up here today. But with all Airbnb rentals and VRBO and home away from home and all those things, make sure you do thorough research and know exactly what you're getting into and what's being promised to you before you book. Next on our list is a brand new tip. Visit when free dining money is available. Still don't know what time frame you should plan your Disney World vacation? I might be able to help narrow down that scope for you. During select times this year, Disney will be offering dining promo cards along with vacation packages to use at Disney World restaurants. How much dining money you'll receive with these cards all depends on where you're going to be staying and what time of year you'll be visiting. But in order to be eligible for a dining promo card, you must book a minimum of four nights at your hotel, meaning gift cards will automatically automatically start at $140 for value resort stays, $300 for moderates, and $500 for deluxe resort stays. Note, you only get one gift card per room, not per person. If you want to be eligible for a dining promo card, you'll need to plan your trip around the end of June, June 25th to the 30th, anytime during the month of July, anytime during the month of August, or the beginning of September up until September 14th. You can learn more about the dining promo card on the DFB website, so I'll go ahead and link the post down in the description for you. 
Now, is this the Disney dining plan? No, not even close. Is this their answer to the dining plan for this year? Maybe, we're still investigating. Now let's talk airlines. 2022 was quite the year for airlines. We saw lots of canceled flights, staff shortages, flight delays, bag claim catastrophes. It was a battlefield out there. We are hoping 2023 is kinder to the airline industry, but I think it's fair to shout out some airlines that weathered these unprecedented times and still got a good percentage of travelers to their destinations with minimal hitches. Of the 10 carriers that were watched throughout 2022, Delta Airlines won most on time for the second year in a row. Overall, Delta's on-time arrival rate was 84.1%. Second place was Alaska Airlines with 81.42%. And third was United with a rate of 81.26%. Does this mean you should throw away other airline options that may be more convenient for you or offer cheaper price points? Absolutely not. Each airline's purpose is to get you to your destination as quickly as possible. The cancel and delays do happen, and they even happen for airlines like Delta. But what these percentages do show are airlines with the best punctuality rates as of now, which might be a big selling point for you regardless of the ticket price. And no matter who you fly with, if you want a better chance of your flight not being canceled or delayed, try booking a flight for early, early, early in the morning. Early morning flights are less likely to be affected by weather issues, staffing shortages, or planes arriving late to the gate. So in short, these AM flights are your best bet for an on-time departure. And should your early morning flight get delayed or canceled, you'll have more chances to get placed on another flight that day. But what happens if your flight is canceled or you're bumped to a later flight anyways? On the U.S. Department of Transportation website, you're going to find the Airline Customer Service Dashboard. This is an easy way to see what your airline's commitments are when your flight doesn't go as planned due to something the airline did. This does not include delays or cancellations caused by weather, though. Here, you're going to be able to find out what you're entitled to after your plans have to suddenly be changed, which, depending on the airport, could include things like meal or cash vouchers, complimentary hotel accommodations, and complimentary complimentary ground transportation to the hotel you'll be staying in. So definitely check that out so you know what you're owed. And sometimes airlines will give you the option to volunteer to be bumped to a later flight if they end up overbooking the flight you're supposed to be on. So is it worth it, right? Why on earth would anyone willingly choose to have their vacation plans delayed? Because airlines often have a system in place that incentivizes guests to give up those seats. Sometimes this happens when you arrive at the gate and they ask for volunteers, but many airlines are looking for ways to start that process earlier by asking guests when they check in online or at the airport if they'd be willing to give up their seat. Incentives vary between airlines, but the amount you're compensated will also depend on the flight and the need for passengers to volunteer. Whether it's worth it to be bumped is up to you and your individual needs, but don't be afraid to ask for upgrades if you do decide to volunteer. It's possible that you could get rescheduled for a better seat, a flight with fewer stops, or get additional compensation in the form of meal vouchers or even flight vouchers. All right, here's another brand new spanking new tip. It just came out a couple weeks ago. You can now park at Disney hotels for free. Stop the presses. This is major Disney news. If you're trying to decide whether or not to drive to Disney World, but you don't want to pay for parking each day of your resort stay, then behold, overnight self-parking is free once again for guests staying at a Disney World resort. This change went into effect on the evening of January 10th. Keep in mind that if you're staying at a non-Disney hotel or Airbnb, you'll still have to pay $25 to park at the theme parks each day of your visit. But Disney World Resort guests will get to skip over that extra fee completely. Nature is healing. Now, I'm always on the hunt for gizmos that'll make my trips more convenient, and I've got a few new ones to add to your Amazon shopping cart here. First up is that waist clip fan. Now, I know it's cool out there right now, but very, very soon, it's gonna get unbearably hot in Orlando. And walking around Disney World property can be a scorcher. But this little waist clip fan is portable for easy travel and simple storage. You can clip it on your waistband to provide some much needed air circulation under your clothes to keep your shirt from sticking to you. Or you can use the strap included with the fan and wear it around your neck. This is currently priced at $34.99. It can come in super, super handy when you're just absolutely dying in that heat. But that said, I will say that the thing I have found the most useful to battle that heat in Orlando are those little cooling towels. Disney sells them. Amazon sells them. Them. All the big box stores sell them and they're relatively inexpensive. Your fan will run out of battery. Those little fans you put around your neck, those will run out of battery really, really fast. But the cooling towels, you can always just go and douse them in ice water and put them around your neck and it makes a huge difference. So that's probably the lowest cost way to change your life in Orlando in the heat. And those cooling towels can be great for your kids too. Sometimes those come in packs of four so everyone in the family can have their own color. Now, speaking of kids, you know they require 
require a lot of accessories. If you want to be equipped for any situation, meaning you might be stuffing multiple diaper bags with changes of clothes and extra passies and sippy cups and bottles and those beige teething cookies and the freeze dried yogurt drops and all of those, you got all that stuff, it's all going to go in your stroller. So instead of carrying those bags all day long, get stroller hooks. They can be like little carabiners, things like that, that you can just hook on your stroller. I had a giant carabiner back in the day that I used to put on my stroller and hook everything onto. Just be sure you're careful with the balance because eventually if your bags get heavier than your kid, then you know, that's not a good thing. But you can get stroller hooks in a pack of two for $12.99. You can get them at all the big box stores. Those can come in really handy as well. Our next tip is finding your lost luggage. Now, the pit that forms in my stomach after hearing those two words, lost luggage, is no laughing matter. It is a helpless feeling. So many of your possessions were filled into that suitcase. What are you supposed to do now? You've only got a short trip to Disney World. What are you going to do? Well, here are some tips for what steps you need to take to track down those vagabond items. And stay tuned because the last tip is going to be super helpful. Well, the other two are helpful too, but the last one's the most helpful. (laughs) First up, look at other carousels. If you notice that your bag has not arrived at the designated carousel, carousel, take a quick peek at the other ones with bags from your airline. Sometimes the baggage ends up on the wrong carousel or the announcer says the wrong number. You can also kind of refresh your app because those apps will also tell you where your bags are. You can also report the missing bag. There should be an airline baggage desk near the baggage claim area. Locate your airline's desk and hop in line. When it's your turn, let the agent know your bag didn't make it and they'll help you figure out what to do from there. Be sure to have a copy of that luggage tag that matches the tag you put on your bags. That'll make it easier for the agent to track down your bags. The agent will look for the status and location of luggage, and if they aren't able to find it, you'll need to file a missing luggage report. You want to provide as many details as possible about your luggage when filing that report, like the size, the color, anything unique and identifying worthy about the bag. Also, before you leave, ask the agent what the airline will reimburse you for. Each airline has a different reimbursement policy that you should be able to find online or be able to ask about at the luggage desk. They may reimburse things like travel essentials or some sort of predetermined amount, you may also be able to get your checked baggage fee refunded. And number three, the one I promised, use Apple AirTags. AirTags are small devices that can send out a signal to your other nearby Apple devices to track down the exact distance between you and wherever you placed your AirTag, as well as in what direction it's located. So if you place your AirTag in your luggage, you should get a better idea about where exactly that luggage is. A single AirTag costs around $30 on Amazon, but you can also get a four pack for around a hundred bucks. Throw them in your bags, and then you always know where they are, even if the airline doesn't. Next on our list is knowing the cheapest times to fly. Okay, recently we searched for data about flight costs for a three-day trip to the Orlando International Airport for flights out of a few different popular airports, including New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Although these may not be the airports you use, the pricing trends are still probably gonna be true for many airports across the country. So what did we find? The cheapest times in 2023 are early in the year, which may not come as a huge shock for many of you since the early winter months are a slow season for not just Disney World, but travel in general. There are also usually cheaper flights around the end of summer and beginning of fall in late August and September. As far as the cheapest days of the week to travel, this shifted throughout the year and also changed between the airports. Generally speaking though, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays were the cheapest days to fly, and Thursdays tend to be the most expensive. Now remember, flight prices change frequently, so make sure you're keeping up to date on what the latest flight prices look like at the airports by you. And to further help cut down on flight costs, you can let an app do the work for you. Instead of going to each airline's website to look at prices, you can take advantage of flight tracker apps like Hopper, Kayak. These apps will alert you when ticket prices change and can help you decide when to book a flight, as well as when to hold out for possibly lower rates. And you can also book your flight between one and three months before you plan to travel. Flights are often priced higher right when they're released, generally about a year before the flight happens. Then you'll see a few months later. So booking as early as possible isn't necessarily the best option here. So Disney World tickets and park passes, book as early as possible. Flights, one to three months ahead of time. Flight prices do start to decrease 200 days before a flight and they begin to increase again roughly 60 days before a flight. So if you can hit that sweet spot just right, you might be able to find the best price point possible. 
Let's talk about saving big bucks with new Disney discounts. We've talked about Disney Springs hotel savings. We've talked about that lovely little dining card promo. You can pick up when you book a vacation package in the summer. But what other discounts is Disney World promoting for their vacation bundles? And remember, they're not going to just apply these for you. You have to apply them yourself. Most Sunday through Thursday nights up until February 28th will give you the opportunity to save 100 bucks per night on deluxe resort stays and 40 per night on moderates and 25 per night on values. On most nights between March 1st and March 31st, you can save 20% on your deluxe, 15 on your moderate and 10 on your value. But starting April 10th and running till July 10th, you can potentially save 25% on your deluxe stay, 20% on your moderate stay and 15 on your value or a DVC villa. Again, it all depends on when you time your visit. And there are lots of other savings opportunities for annual pass holders, military members, Disney Visa card holders. Those are all listed on the special offers, deals and discounts page now. And we also send out all that information in our newsletter. So if you wanna keep up to date on the latest and greatest savings that are just popping up because they do sell out, make sure to subscribe to the free DFB newsletter so I can send you the latest deals straight to your inbox as soon as I hear about them. I'll drop the subscription link down in the description. And if figuring out the best discounts and applying them yourself sounds like a huge hassle, then you might want to think about a Disney travel agent because you don't have to carry this stress on your shoulders all by yourself. Booking a Disney World travel agent like our friends at Small World Vacations can be a great step. It's not for everybody, but it can be helpful for those of us who are very, very busy and just don't have time to kind of triple check every single discount that comes out. So Small World Vacations and most Disney travel agents are free services. No, for real, travel agents make their money off of commissions when they help you book a trip. So it turns out to be a perfect partnership. You get your dream trip and they get paid. They're also super, super helpful. Not only will they book hotels and tickets for you, but they can give you recommendations on vacation packages. They can apply all those discounts to your resorts. They can figure out ticket types that are going to make the most sense for you and your family, whether you should do park hoppers, all of that stuff. And they want to get you the best deals possible. Travel agents get a heads up on the latest savings and discounts, so they already have the most updated knowledge on how to save for your trip specifically. So if you want to look into getting a free quote from Small World Vacations, I'll add that link down in the description for you as well. All right, this is an old school tip, but I'm going to say it again because it comes in handy for every single trip that I take. Pack those trash bags and those Ziploc bags. A nice sturdy trash bag can be the MVP of your trip. Maybe even invest in some nice scented ones so the car smells like lavender or lemon. I also use trash bags on the plane, especially with little kids or toddlers. They create so much garbage during a flight, it's absolutely unbelievable. And Ziploc bags are super handy too, especially if you need something to hold your car snacks and your toll change. But don't forget them in your park bag as well. They're gonna help you save any leftover suckers. They can protect your tech and keep it dry when you go on water rides. They can keep hold of any pressed penny collections. They can also very easily hold your leftovers if you wanna bring them back to your hotel and stick them in your fridge. Oh, and one more thing for trash bags specifically. You know how you go into a hotel room and you can never find the laundry bag? Yeah, go ahead and use your trash bag for your dirty clothes. I do it all the time. Next tip is to pack cash. Disney World likes to encourage you to be as cashless as possible, but there are lots of reasons for that. One of those reasons is because guests are more likely to spend more money on souvenirs and snacks if they're swiping a card and not seeing the physical cash leave their hands. Gets even worse if you're just tapping a magic band. Bringing a set amount of leafy dollar bill greens in your wallet can be the perfect way to set a merch budget for yourself. Once the cash is gone, you'll know it's time to cut yourself off from any more extravagant purchases. Cash is also good to have on hand, not just as a budgeting tactic, but as a safety net tactic too. Sometimes even if you call your bank ahead of time to warn them that you'll be on vacation and will be having to spend lots of money in places you don't frequent all too often, your bank may still wind up putting you on a fraud watch and shut down your card until you can call them to clear things up. Or sometimes Disney's payment systems might glitch out and only accept cash for the time being. Just this past December, we were trying to buy ears at the Magic Kingdom, but when we walked into a shop to grab a pair, we were unable to use our credit card. We even tried to use the mobile checkout option but still had no luck. Disney usually fixes these problems pretty quickly but if you don't have time to wait around or if you don't plan on coming back to buy a certain souvenir later on then having cash on hand can still seal the deal and get those mini ears on your head as soon as possible. 
Here's another road trip tip. Download those fast food apps. If you don't want to pack sack lunches for your long car trips, and if you want to use lunchtime as an opportunity to get out of the car and stretch your legs for a bit, then you might find yourself hitting up a lot of fast food spots along the way. After all, they're cheap, they're quick, they'll get your family fed. But even your run-of-the-mill fast food locations can start adding up after a while, which is why signing up for rewards programs at participating fast food spots can help save you money and earn you points toward free items on your way home. Some of the more popular fast food apps you may want to consider down Downloading for free include those restaurants like Starbucks, McDonald's, Chipotle, Dunkin', lots of others. Seriously, just Google your favorite fast food location and add app at the end, and they'll have a rewards program, more than likely. And for some fast food apps, you may still be able to use your rewards points after you drive on into the Disney bubble. There are two Starbucks stores inside Disney Springs that'll accept your rewards. One in the Marketplace section, super close to World of Disney, and one on the west side across from Disney Style. You can also drive over to the on-site McDonald's located at the intersection of Osceola Parkway and West Buena Vista Drive and use your rewards there too. Believe me, I run Disney Food Blog, but I have been to that McDonald's more than I care to admit. Now this next tip, super important, stick with me. More than likely, you're forgetting to look into this part of the travel planning process, and that part is travel insurance. Don't roll your eyes, let me explain. I'm not here to make you think doom and gloom about your vacation, but upsets do happen. Sometimes a hurricane breezes past and closes down flights and parks. Sometimes unforeseen circumstances back in your hometown bring your plans to a sudden halt. But you don't buy travel insurance because you know something bad's gonna happen, much like you don't buy health insurance because you know you're gonna get sick, or you don't buy car insurance because you know you're gonna get in a wreck. You buy insurance just to have that extra layer of protection, so you don't have to worry about losing thousands on a vacation you didn't get to experience. Disney actually offers its own travel insurance to U.S. residents, which you can find the details for on the Disney World website. You can also usually purchase travel insurance through airlines or other companies too, like Nationwide and AAA. Don't know which plan's the best fit for you? Even after doing all that research? Then you can talk to our Small World Vacations travel agent buds about that too. They'll know which direction to point you in. Now let's talk about getting your perfect Disney outfit, because you know what your suitcase needs? The best Disney ensemble ever. And not to toot my own horn or anything, but we've got the best Disney shirts just for you over on merch.dfbstore.com right now. Designs are like our 2023 vacation tees, plastic cheese sweatshirts, so many awesome brand new shirts coming out this year. So if you do end up wearing one of these DFB shirts at the parks, don't forget to take a picture and tag us on our social because we'd love to see it and we will feature you and we will put it on our Insta stories and we'll be super excited. Now, I've got one more big flight savings tip I've been holding off on telling you about, but now seems as good a time as any to fill you in on how to uncover secret flight deals. What you're gonna need to do is download the Skip Lagged app. This is basically a flight search engine that claims to show you flights that the airlines don't want you to see, which helps ensure you get the best possible price available, according to them, allegedly. So how does it work? Well, they say they use an algorithm to show you the cheapest regular flights and hidden city flights. Now, hidden city flights are flights that are part of itineraries with multiple layovers where you would exit before your final destination. Here, let me just give you an example real quick that might be easier. Let's say you wanna take a flight from New York City to San Francisco. You could book a flight that's listed as going from New York City to Seattle with a layover in San Francisco if that chose to be a cheaper flight option for you. Then you just wouldn't take that second flight to Seattle once you land in San Fran for your layover. So you're skipping that leg of the journey, but it still gets you to where you want to go. Now, what's the downside? That's right. If you're taking a checked bag, this is not going to work because that checked bag is going to head all the way to the intended final destination and not the layover one. So if you plan to use skip lag, stick with the carry-ons to make sure all your stuff goes with you. All right, you've got the tricks, you've got the travel route laid out, and you've got the family packed and ready to go. Now it's time to put these tips to the test and head out towards your dream Disney World vacation. Remember to keep checking back here with us for even more travel tips to come and future Disney World reviews, recommendations, the latest news. You know we're going to ride Tron, you know we're going to eat at Woody's Roundup Barbecue, etc., etc., so that you can stay up to date on all things Disney. And don't forget to send your email to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash more travel tips for your own digital copy of today's time and money-saving travel tricks. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification button so you know when we have a new video come out. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.